Hey, what's up YouTube? So this is another video that I'm going to be posting of the Z3 breakdown. Um, the reason why I got the car is because the car didn't actually run. So, um, I mean, I just wanted it for the transmission anyways, but if I can kind of diagnose to see what actually happened, then, uh, you know, maybe you guys are having the same problem. It's a high mileage motor, but as you can look, I mean, cams are still good condition, really. There's nothing, you know, the head's bronze, so they kept a good oil change. That's a good, uh, you know, telltale heart to let you know that if you have a bad motor, if it was even treated good or anything, it'd be usually black. That means they didn't usually change the oil at all. So I came to the conclusion I was actually turning the crank, and this is what I actually get. So the cams aren't actually turning at all. Um, I'm guessing the tensioner went out. So basically I'm gonna break this down. I just wanna show you the tools you're gonna to need to do it. So first you're gonna need this right here for the crank. You wanna have a breaker bar. And then uh, what I'm basically gonna do is use this with uh, another breaker bar to go against it. So you can actually see how I actually take the crank down. We're gonna start breaking down this K20Z3. So take off this mount take off the VDC solenoid and um, take the cover off so there's 10s all the way around here there's a 10 right here these are 14s uh, that's a 10 that's a 10 um, and the crank pulley is a 19 millimeter so uh, we're gonna take this crank pulley off and then uh, we'll take off this hose too I believe that's a 8 millimeter um to get exposed to the side cover so we can actually see what actually went wrong with this motor and if i can actually uh save it most likely the block is turning good and doesn't seem to have any problems with that we just got to see what's going on if the head is has bent valves or anything i actually have a spare head so um i'm gonna go ahead and take this cover off and then uh show you guys how i took the pulley off the crank all right so this is basically how you set um, the tools up to uh, basically take the crank pulley off by yourself I mean most of the time I never really have anybody to help me so you gotta figure these things out yourself so I got two breaker bars I actually snapped my last ratchet that actually stood in pretty good from uh, Harbor Freight it actually lasted a couple years and a couple crank pulleys so I finally gave up so I just decided to upgrade and get two breaker bars instead and so risking ratchets and everything so that's basically how you do it and then my, with the pressure of me going down and against it, it'll help keep the crank pulley in. Um, it'll allow you to uh, break it by yourself. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock this out and then we can start taking the mount off, the, the sensor, that hose, uh, the crank pulley and side cover so we can get to the other side and see what's actually going on with this thing. All right, so got the crank pulley off. Um, it's gonna need a lot of pressure. You might wanna use like your jack stand bar to actually add a lot of extra pressure because Taking it off was uh, kind of a little harder than I thought it was, um, especially when they're stock and they've never been taken apart before. So uh, from factory, they are a little hard. You might want to use like some JB um, blaster or WD-40, whatever you can to kind of loosen those threads. But like I said, it works every time. These two tools are perfect to take the crank pulley off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off this mount and then start getting everything else so we can so I got all my bolts off and everything. I just wanted to show you guys a little trick on taking out the sensor because uh, it's really hard to take out factory. So there's something right in the inside right here. It's actually right in here where you can't really see. Right there. So what I do is just take a flathead and kind of just scoop it out. So you can just pop it out. It's a lot easier. Yeah, I'm going to have to clean that up. But yeah, if you ever have problems with that, that's the solution because if you don't it'll most likely just snap or you end up breaking the sensor so I'm gonna go ahead and take the cover off now so we can get to the problem all right so after going over everything it just looks like we have a bad tensioner uh, the tensioner went out and jumped timing so basically um, the timing is off so if the timing is off it's definitely not gonna run a start I mean the crank was at like top dead center and the cams were like way out of rat whack so 
most likely jump timing. Uh, hopefully it's still good. Um, I'm gonna get a new chain and tensioner and uh, we'll put the timing correctly. I'll show you guys how to do that on the next video. Um, and see, I, I'll buy a brand new compression tester. We'll put a battery to it and see if we get uh, some compression in the cylinders. So, I mean, as far as the rotor, I mean, like I said, even the inside, it's all golden. Uh, so it is fresh. Uh, for some people who don't know about the VTEC lobes, this is uh, the three lobes. So this is one lobe right here, two lobe, three lobe. Uh, this is your actual VTEC lobe, so when you go into VTEC, uh, the pins lock up uh, and run off of this lobe, so that's basically your VTEC. Um, yeah, so we'll see. I'm going to order the parts, go to Harbor Freight, get a compression tester, and uh, the next video I'll show you guys hopefully if it, if it bent the valves or if it actually was safe and uh, didn't bend the valves. So stay tuned for the K20Z3 rebuild. Um, if you guys haven't, uh, share, ring that bell, comment, like, and uh, stay tuned for uh, more of the Z3 build.